there. Um, so, Commissioner, I know we've, we've, we've had um, uh, private briefings where we've asked you for data about the fixed penalty notices, and uh, I think we've written to you as well. So, the data that, that's been released today is the first we've seen of um, the, num the, the final numbers of data of fixed penalty notices and arrests being made, and also the first we've seen of a demographic breakdown. So I just wanted to get, uh, while, while we're in the, the meeting in public, get some clarity and uh, make sure that we, we discuss that data. Um, your press release issued this morning and the report that was issued this morning, but which is dated the 28th of May, um, outlines that you've issued 973 fixed penalty notices and um, have made 36 arrests for breaches of the regulations alone and uh, a higher number of arrests for wider uh, offences and uh, that also go alongside um, breaches of the data. Um, you've released demographic data and obviously at this time we're all particularly interested in uh, ethnicity and the demographic data shows that compared with the proportion of the population, uh, black Londoners have been over twice as likely to be issued with a fixed penalty notice. They've had 26% of the fines issued and they're only 12% of the population. And on arrests, there's an even higher disproportion. 2.58 is the ratio, 31% of arrests versus, again, 12% of the, the population. So I just wanted to make sure that we, we discuss that data. Um, and just to check, I mean, you, you said before that you were there are a relatively small number of fixed penalty notices being issued. I think that's borne out by, by national data that Liberty have released. Uh, London, in proportion to its population, there are, just, there are lower numbers. Um, there's some signs that other forces have even higher disproportionality in terms of um, ethnicity too. But given this is the first we've seen of this data, have you been monitoring this data very closely and feeding back to officers uh, cautions and guidance on avoiding this disproportionality um, and doing anything in terms of, say, training to try and try and bring this down because it is evident in the data now and we we will want to be continuing to scrutinize this uh, and ask you questions about it not just in terms of acknowledging that there is the disproportionality but what you're doing to bring that down thank you very much um so just to go back to our general approach um as you know in relation to the restrictions we always engage spend a lot of time engaging with people, explaining the restrictions, uh, encouraging people, advising, cajoling, wanting people to comply, and using common sense and discretion, and only enforcing where the officer believes they, they must. And you said low volume. It, it isn't just per head of population it's low. In my view, Tom, it is very, very low, full stop. We are, I think, probably the fourth or fifth lowest per head of population in the country. That's an interesting point. But when you look at the practically minuscule number of notices, my view, and less than one arrest a day in the whole of London, when we've had a total change in the law, uh, a completely new set of things for the public and the officers to get their heads around. The vast majority of these notices and arrests, as you know, were in the first few weeks when it was very hot. Um, and millions of encounters between, uh, between officers and the public about the restrictions. I would say this is just a very low number mm. of stock. Um, we've had thousands more officers on the street because of less crime and we're growing. Every hour, there have been many more officers out there. I'm sure you've seen that. And yes, far fewer members of the public as well. Uh, but we've been actively policing, and we have been trying to bear down on violent crime. We have been policing in the areas where we know there's a high footfall, where there are many people out and about, and in the areas where we think there could be uh, breaches, like the central London parks near where I am now, the South Bank near where I am now, uh, but also in the areas of high violent crime. And you'll see that the you know large proportion of the arrests have been when COVID has been part of something else. 
So I'm not going to paint the picture for you, but you can imagine the sort, sort of circumstances I think that the officers are, are, are dealing with when they've ended up enforcing in this way. But you'll see that it has reduced hugely laterally. Now, the disproportionality, as you call it, such as, as it is, and I don't want to sort of say it's not there, it, there is an apparent disproportionality there, but it is very much in line with other disproportionality that we see. Which, you know, obviously, overall, nobody is happy that, for example, um, black and minority ethnic uh, friends and family and colleagues are subject to far higher levels of victimization. Nobody is happy that there are lots of differences in society in that way. And nobody is happy, I suppose, overall, that when the police are enforcing the law, they often, in our, you know, in, the, in this time in our history, are, are, are coming into contact with, you know, people in different ways across society. So I, I, I appreciate that this is an important issue in some, in some ways, but I really, uh, the whole issue, of course, of fairness and of equality and what's been happening to our BME community is, is enormously important. But I don't see, I'm afraid, this, this data here as extremely uh, either surprising or something that people should get Okay. Um, look at it in context. The context is less than 2,000 tickets, okay. a very small number of arrests. Okay, so my, my question before was, was, was what are you doing about it? And I think one of the things that's clear in the data is you said, you know, there's engagement and then if, if, it, if it crosses a certain threshold, then there is a fine. Potentially another threshold is whether or not somebody is arrested. Um, and it's quite clear that in, in, in each stage, there is a disproportionality towards black Londoners. And there, there are cases that we've seen that have been shared on social media where you can sort of see what's going on here, that there's there's a the engagement doesn't work out as well because potentially the officers do not have the same attitude towards black Londoners as they do to other Londoners. And my question was, what are you doing about this? You can see how unconscious biases, for example, could lead towards those thresholds cross, being crossed more often for black people. And so are you taking advantage of the time that you have to do the proactive policing you've described to us. Are you taking advantage of that, that leeway to do more training, to, to ask officers to pay attention to their biases when they're engaging in this work? That was my question before. What are you doing about it? So I do not accept all your premises. Having said that, absolutely we have been saying to our people, engage, 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 explain, 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 be friendly, be positive. I've been out on the streets a lot. I have seen nothing but officers, even with people who approach them in quite an aggressive fashion, for, for whatever reason, and I'm not here necessarily at all talking about people from minority communities, but they are incredibly restrained in, in the main. They are extraordinarily friendly. That's what we've been saying. We've been saying this is a horrible time for the city. Do not, you know, uh, do anything other than try and help people to understand the restrictions and help them to comply and keep themselves and other people safe. And that applies to everybody. We have not specific, we have absolutely said you need to be in certain violent crime hotspots. We've said you need to police sensitively. We've said you need to be, be careful. We, they are, you know, well trained anyway. I have not gone back to them and said, you know, if, you, if this is the question a month ago, I am concerned about this disproportionality. Please stop acting in this manner, which will lead to disproportionality. Because I don't see that as a, an issue that it's appropriate to do this about. We have been retraining officers. We haven't stopped training. Uh, we have, of course, been talking about how people may be feeling from a variety of different communities, and even more so in the last few days. Of course we have. But I have not, and I would not, and I wouldn't in retrospect either, do what you have suggested. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly unsatisfied uh, at the so um, you... acknowledgement that there are unconscious biases, but yeah. also I want to give the give way to Assemblymember Arnold, who's had a hand up for a while, so yeah. I'll leave it there for yeah. a moment. Thank you. Uh, as, as Assemblymember Arnold, uh, and then uh, and then Assemblymember Whittle, yeah. Yes, Chair, I, I do want to come in, and um, uh, uh, good morning to everyone. And um, uh, can I just start by saying that, like, um, uh, or, like us all, we, we welcome the uh, decrease in crime and uh, we absolutely um, stand fast in our support of um, our, um, the Met's finest. Um, however, 
there are issues that have to be addressed. And they have to be addressed when they are at the, if you like, starting point. When I would say to you they are in small numbers, because if they are not addressed, then what happens is that they grow, they take over, and we can never forget the Met's history in its relationship with the BAME community. That is at the, for, at the forefront of the thoughts of every grandparent, every parent, and now third generation youngster, the relationship with police service. So when um, you read, and when I'm contacted, and I've had numerous numbers of um, pieces of casework saying, have we returned to a time of sus? What is happening? Uh, is there a policy of racial profiling? How is the mayor addressing unconscious bias? That is where we are. Now, it may be small numbers, but it is disproportionate to what we would expect so therefore there is an issue so if you cannot answer or give say anything more than you said commissioner i do want to say to you that we're going to have to come back and have another conversation about this in a much more thorough way because what you've said so far is not something that I can go back to those who have contacted me and say, I'm not going to go back and say the, the Met Commissioner feels the numbers are small and is in a way content with the situation as it is, because I certainly am not content and the people are calling me are not content. Um, and um, I share um, my colleagues um, uh, Sean Berry's concerns. Thank you. But, uh, if, if I could just respond, I'm really happy to continue this conversation. I absolutely am, uh, in a, whatever format, wherever. I, I started by acknowledging just how strongly people are feeling about all kinds of things, just how fearful people are, how cross some people are about various things. I started acknowledging, but, you know, by acknowledging the amount of capacity we have had and the fact that we've had many officers out on the street. I remain proud of what they have been doing. I absolutely do. But of course, you know, I recognize the history that we're talking about here, overall. And that's why we absolutely have been saying to them, you know, be careful, be sensitive, think about this. Think about how you're working with people. That's why they've adopted, in my view, the very uh, low-key and friendly approach. If we go back 10 or 12 weeks, you know, people were wondering how on earth this would work <laughs> and whether the public would just, you know, start, you know, being terribly angry very quickly by the way they were being policed. And we've been, I think, brilliant collectively at avoiding that. People were worrying about disorder. They were worrying about looting. We've been brilliant collectively at keeping London overall safe and calm in extraordinary circumstances. But I absolutely acknowledge what, what you are saying. Um, the, the, um, one part of this is the officers have been in high, high crime, high violent crime areas, and they have been have been looking for people that they know to be prolific knife carriers, to be violent offenders. And when they see, for example, you know, I'm not talking about ethnicity here, but when the restrictions say you can't have more than two people or than three, and you've got four boys in a car that will who clearly don't come from the same household, that will immediately take them to think about talking to those people. Now, we've said again and again, be sensitive, be careful, and I think they have been. But I have not been going back to them. I have to be honest. I haven't gone back to them and say, think about your unconscious bias. I said, let's keep things calm. Let's do our work really professionally. Let's be careful. And when things have, you know, go wrong, inverted commas, respond to it really well and carefully, which I think we have. Okay. 